schizophrenia is characterized by positive symptoms represented by hallucinations and delusions, negative symptoms including diminished emotional expression and abolition, and cognitive impairments. Patients with schizophrenia are symptomatically and genetically heterogeneous, and it is assumed that there are various underlying pathological mechanisms. From genetic and etiological studies, autoimmune mechanisms underlying schizophrenia were suspected. However, the details remain unclear. Autoantibodies are a primary driver of autoimmunity. Indeed, autoantibodies against synaptic membrane molecules have been found in patients with encephalitis. To identify novel autoantibodies that may contribute to schizophrenia pathophysiology, we use the cell-based assay screening. One candidate antigen was neural cell adhesion molecule, NCAM1, a synaptic adhesion molecule that supports synaptic connections by transhomophilic binding. Indeed, NCAM1 mutations are associated with schizophrenia. In a recent study, we identified novel autoantibodies against NCAM1 in patients with schizophrenia. The administration of IgG antibodies isolated from patients with schizophrenia interrupted homophilic interactions of NCAM1. Furthermore, direct administration of anti-NCAM1 autoantibodies into the cerebrospinal fluid of mice reduced the number of spines and synapses in the frontal cortex and induced cognitive impairments and a deficiency in prepulse inhibition, which is an established endophenotype of schizophrenia in humans and mice. These behavioral and synaptic changes are also found in NCAM1 knockout mice and transgenic mice with a dominant negative form of NCAM1. Factors other than NCAM1 dysfunction may cause dysregulation of synapses in the presence of anti-NCAM1 autoantibodies. For example, targeting of synapses by autoantibodies may result in microglial synaptic pruning even if the autoantibodies do not provoke an inflammatory response in the microglia. Such synaptic pruning has been reported during development, although it is not known how such targeted pruning is regulated. During normal development, synaptic pruning usually stops during adolescence, whereas progression of synaptic pruning after adolescence is hypothesized for schizophrenia. Autoantibodies against synaptic molecules, including NCAM1, may be involved in such progressive synaptic pruning by acting as a target marker for microglia. A novel identification of anti-NCAM1 autoantibodies is important because these autoantibodies can serve as biomarkers that distinguish a subgroup of patients with schizophrenia. Also, immunological interventions such as plasma exchange and immunoglobulin therapy, which are usually used to treat autoantibody encephalitis, may work in this subgroup. A clinical study testing whether anti-NCAM1 autoantibodies play a role in schizophrenia would show that interventions improve the symptoms of schizophrenia, and this is our future plan. Thank you for watching.